Hello, hello, hey, sweet people, and welcome to another. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we good? Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't laugh, you'll make me laugh. Amo, por favor. No te consiguiendo. Okay, well, I'm going to do it with you laughing or not. Tá, pronto. Hello, hello, hey, sweet people. Welcome to another episode of English Nukuru Haju. Before we get started, just a quick word from our sponsors, Cambly. So I imagine that you are spending a lot of time at home right now, which is very boring. It's not fun. It's a difficult time for everyone, but you can make this time a little bit better by improving your English and by talking and making connections with native speakers. Sim. And the best way we know how to do that is with Cambly. Sim. Take it away, Alexia. <laughs> então vocês já sabem. Vamos lá. Cambly.com, aplicativo do Cambly. Vá lá em menu, depois de criar seu perfil, claro. Em menu, minutos grátis e coloca inglês no, inglês no grupo podcast. Desse jeito, você vai ganhar sua aula de graça. Você vai ficar muito feliz, extremamente motivado e sabendo exatamente no que precisa melhorar. Então é isso, né, Faixa? Eu acho que a gente falou tudo. Yeah, yeah, go to Cambly, speak to native speakers, and let's get on with the show. Hello, hello, hey, sweet people, and welcome to another episode of English no Cru Rádio. Alexia, why are you laughing? Why are you giggling like a little crazy girl? Just because it's one of those... Like, bobagem, momentos de bobagem, de bo baboseira. For no reason at all, I think we should all laugh during our work, because we love our work, our job, and what we do. Yeah, so just to give a little bit of context, <laughs> this is probably the third time we've tried to record this episode. <laughs> I was having some difficulty, Alexia started laughing, and that's where we are right now. Yeah, so welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast, English in the Radio. I'm Alexia, and I'm here with Foster. What's up? Not much. What about you? Not too much. I'm a uh, little bit tired. Uh, me too. A little bit grumpy, but I'm ready to start recording. Yeah, but I mean, I woke up with a dog throwing up on our bed, so I think I, I win this one. You win. It's not a competition. No, it's not. Okay, so today I'm really excited because the last two episodes I got two or three, I can remember. I got 100% correct with the expressions. You are a straight A student. So yes, this week on the show, we are continuing our conversation, talking about some really common expressions in English. Most of these are pretty unique Some of them you already know. Perhaps some of them will be new for you. And each day we are focusing on a different group, a different category of expressions. And this day, today, we are focusing <laughs> on expressions that have to do with work. Uh -huh. How does that sound to you, Alexia? Sounds good. Okay. Are you ready to get started? Yes, I am. Okay, let's begin with an easy expression. So the first expression that is related to work, the workplace, office, that kind of stuff. The first expression we have today is out of work. Do you understand this one, Alexia? Yes, it means that it's not working, literally. Um, do you want to explain a little more for clarification? Out of work, for example, when I go to the bathroom and I see a sign and it's like out of work, it's not working. <laughs> Alexia started it could be, you know? so, so confidently, 100% straight A student, right out of the gate. The first expression of the day is wrong. Why? I thought that was an easy one. Okay, so what you are talking about, for example, if you go to the bathroom... Uh, I know, I know, I know, I know. What? I know. 
I know. What do you know? Can I try? Yeah. I know the expression. Out of work, it means when someone doesn't have a job. Okay. And what was the expression you were looking for? I don't remember. <laughs> okay. So you were looking for the expression out of order, I believe. Ah, uh, yes. So, for example, if be. you go to the restroom and the toilet or the sink is not working, normally you will see a sign that says out of order which means, hey, this machine is not working right now. It is in maintenance. Okay. But out of work is something completely different. We use out of work to talk about when people are unemployed. Yes. Yes. Cool. So do you want to try to use this in a sentence, please? Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are out of work because of the pandemic. Exactly. So this expression can essentially be used as a synonym for unemployed. Does that make sense? Yes. Pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sad. I didn't get it, but okay. There's no reason to be sad. Okay. That's part of the game. Are you ready for another one? Yes. Okay. Expression number two. Alexia, do you know what it means if something is under the table. Yes, I do because I'm Brazilian. So all Brazilians <laughs> should know this, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, under the table is when you are doing something sketchy, like um, when you accept payoffs. Um, yeah, perhaps. Like when you are doing something without signing it, without a contract. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I will make one clarification, I think. So if you do something under the table, especially if you're working under the table, it doesn't necessarily have to mean like you're accepting payoffs or bribes. It's not necessarily... It's secret. Yeah, it's not necessarily connected to corruption. So for example... <laughs> For example, <laughs> under the table just means another expression we have is off the books. So essentially you mm -hmm. are not reporting this work to the government, probably because you don't want to pay taxes. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. But I I see this as like I'm doing something secretly. Um, it can be bad and good. But it's secret. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's not necessarily like a sense of secrecy. It's pretty much just paying people in cash. So, for example, I could say to one of my students, hey, you can just pay me under the table, which means I don't need to send you like a receipt or invoice. You can just give me $20 and we do a class right now. Okay. So we normally talk about paying people under the table. Okay. Okay, cool. Are you ready for another one? Yes, I am. Okay, the next phrase we have, the next work expression, to make a living. Is when you had to work your ass off <laughs> to pay for everything that you need. Okay, um, kind of, kind of. For example... For example, we we make a living by working as podcasters and teachers. Exactly. So do you want to try to give a more clear definition instead of simply saying work your ass off? No, it's, um, <laughs> well, um, it depending on what you're working, you are making a living. So you are paying for your food, your housing and etc. with that money. So you're making a living through your work. Yeah. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. So for example, I hear make a living a lot in the context of, uh, um, you know, it's, it's not the most fun work in the world, but I can make a living doing it. So it pays the bills. Yeah. Yeah. So make a living is essentially a euphemism, like a nice way to say, 
how do you pay your bills? Yeah. Or what do you do for work? Yeah. Does that make so sense? I think I was right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Great. Okay, Alexia, I'm excited about this next one. I'm not sure if you know it, but you might. The next work-related expression that we have is a jack of all trades. Faz tudo. Okay, do you want to explain in English? <laughs> it's a person who can do many different types of work, but this person is not an expert on anything. Exactly. A jack of all trades is a generalist. So do you understand trade in this context? Uh-huh. A troca. Yeah. Normally, a trade, I would say the best translation is troca. But also, you can talk about trade as like a a craft, like a skill that you develop. Yeah. So I think in this sense, what we're saying, I imagine Jack is just a name. I'm not 100% certain, but of all trades, that simply means you are good or this person is good at doing a lot of different things. Yeah, exactly. Which I like to consider myself a jack of all trades. I'm not really good at anything, but I'm okay yes, at a lot are. of things. No, stop it. <laughs> We've talked about, we did an entire week of episodes talking about the differences between generalist and specialist. So if you're interested in jack of all trades, generalization, that kind of thing, you should check out those episodes. Yeah. Okay. Do you have time for a couple more expressions, Alexia? Of course. Okay. Can I get a drum roll for this one? Uh, the next work-related expression, foot in the door. I think I know this one. I Pena mean, it makes porta. sense. Eh, então, it makes sense the way that I'm thinking, but I don't know if it's right. Um, it's like when you need to succeed with the first step. Like you need the first thing to succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're on the it right remember, path. It, it reminds me of... The salesmen and saleswomen around the houses, like knocking on the doors and offering their product or something like that. And it will be fine once the person opens the door for them and then they can sell. But without that, they won't be able to sell anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's essentially correct. So I'm just thinking about this now for the first time. But if you actually think about the phrase foot in the door the example you gave of salespeople like knocking on people's door that's a great example because i think that is where this phrase comes from someone opens the door they're ready to talk to you and they're about to close the door and you have to put your foot in the door before they can close it yeah yeah so more specifically we use this phrase talking about industries or companies so when you get your foot in the door to an industry or a company, we are normally talking about you know someone or you meet someone that can networking that can help you in that industry or company. Couldn't it be like, oh, I would like I would love to work for that company. I just need a foot in the door. Yeah. Yeah. I just need an interview. I just need to know someone. Exactly. I actually, I was talking to my friend Jackson yesterday. Jackson is looking for jobs and he works in kind of like urban design and development, an industry that I don't really know anything about. And I was asking him, like, who do you need? Like, how do you get a job <laughs> in this industry? And he's like, hey, man, it's. It's almost like all industries, like you just have to get a foot in the door, which means no. you kind of have to know the right people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Maybe your dad knows someone. For Jackson? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe my dad could provide a foot in the door for my friend. <laughs> okay, Alexia, the last one for today. This is an expression that 
I really, really like. And I'm very curious to see if you know. On the house. Ah, it's like, no problem, sir. Your food was horrible, so this is on the house. You don't have to pay for anything. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So if something is on the house, it means that it is free. Exactly. So when you, for example, when you are throwing a party and you guys are at a bar and you say, the last round is on me. So it's the same thing, but it's on the house. It means like you don't have to pay anything because the house is the, the, the place that you're there. It's paying for you. Exactly. So we almost always use this in the context of a business. So you can imagine in this case on the house, the house is the business. So what we are really saying is you don't have to worry about it because the house, the business is going to pay for it. Yeah, exactly. And the most common example of this is the example you gave with restaurants. Like, I don't know, maybe it's a place that you go to often and you get a drink and you're trying to pay for the drink and they say, no, don't worry, this one's on the house. Or you get f food that's, I don't know, they mess up your order, they don't give you the correct food. They say, don't worry about it, it's on the house. Yeah, I remember one time that this happened to me i was at pizzeria guanabara at leblon in rio and then i ordered a pizza and that pizza came with a, a caramujo <laughs> and the caramujo of course was dead because i mean he went to the oven and it was horrible for him of course but i mean no one checked the pizza before because because it was a huge caramujo and it came because of the Uh, manjericão, it was in the middle of the manjericão, mm -hmm. the and basil, then, yeah, the basil. And I love that translation the... in English. We say basil in Portuguese, manjericão, meu Deus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the, the guy said, No worry, <laughs> it's on the house, of course, it is. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's the least you can <laughs> do. Okay, I have another quick funny story about Jackson. <laughs> so I just stayed the weekend with my friend Jackson, who always has funny stories. So he was talking about when he worked in the kitchen. One time he made a pizza, but he was making a lot of pizzas. He was very busy. So he forgot to put sauce on the pizza. <laughs> so it was just bread <laughs> and cheese and... They sent it out for delivery, and then the person sent the pizza back, and they were like, hey, if we just got cheese bread, can someone please put sauce on this? <laughs> so I believe Jackson had to give the pizza on the house. Yeah, on, yeah, on him, I'm pretty sure he had to pay for probably, that. Probably, probably. Yeah. Okay, guys, there you go. Those are some useful, very common, and interesting work expressions that you can use all of these when you are working, like in an office environment, or you can just use them in your everyday conversation and it will make you sound much more natural and much more native and comfortable. Indeed. Okay, cool. Thank you, Alexia, and we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do Inglês de Necro Rádio. É muito bom ter você juntinho assim de nós. Faz muito, muito carinho no nosso coração, digamos assim. Então você que está interessado em saber mais sobre os nossos produtos e saber mais sobre a gente, o que, que a gente oferece para vocês em relação a estudo, a challenge a curso, vá lá no inglesdenecro.com e você pode ver mais sobre as worksheets, por exemplo. Né? Yeah. If you want to really improve your English, if you want to learn more about the ways you can do that and just connect with us on a deeper level, go to com. And as always, keep up the good fight. And lose well. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>